Independence 50 years on uh, in the following the independence uh, kind of get, getting her independence a 10 year scandal continues to be a thorn in the flesh of the government and it seems this particular past week and now it has come to its toll and we are also joined by James Martin our conversation with Karanja Kabage who is an advocate of the High Court and Bonnie Halwale Senator Kakamega County that guy over there is my co-host. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back. I've been following the conversation uh -huh. uh, and following what Kenyans are saying out there. Right. Uh, and and I, I think we're in the right direction. Yes. You know, uh, and the big question that I think everyone wants answered, you know, is why we are paying a guarantor. Yes. 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 Okay. That, that is the biggest question. Yes. Okay. Mm. Okay. okay. You see, yes. the, the yes. first merchant securities corporation it was not just a guarantor. It paid the money. It paid the money. That's what the court document says. Mm -hmm. That the money was paid by this company so that the supply of the ish, of the equipment could be made. And that's why they were going to court. And in the contract, there was an agreement that I have paid on your behalf. You're going to pay me. And there is going to be an attraction of interest of 8.75% per annum if you do not meet your obligations every year. Get what I mean? So I think people must get that clear. Me, I'm talking about court documents. In the public arena, you can say anything you want to say. So when the matter went to court, the evidence that Kenya government produced was a report of price water hall, price water House Coopers. House Coopers. All right? The evidence was there, according to Kenya government, but the judge rejected that evidence. And this is not enough. Mm -hmm. It doesn't persuade me that there was corruption, as far as this case is concerned. And when you make allegations, when you allege there is corruption, the onus is for you to prove. We, as a government of Kenya, never proved. So the judgment was entered against us. So that is a fact that you really need to realize. Now let's go to what uh, Moshmua Senator has said. That WACO gave uh, uh, Gedu a very clean file, a clear file to, to deal with the matter. I want you to remember there was a clip that was played there of who? Of justice, reti uh, retired justice, Ringera. What did Ringera say? Ringera said that when he sought mutual legal assistance from the international players, he talked about Geneva, the Attorney General in Switzerland, he talked about England, he talked about the US, he talked about Netherlands. What happened? What happened is that somebody went to court, our own court here, and his action was countermanded. That you are not, you don't have authority to go and seek mutual legal assistance. So our own Kenya Anti-Corruption Commission was stopped by our own court. Don't proceed that way. You get what I mean? Father, what happened? When WACO, when KECC and Aringera investigated the case and gave files to WACO to prosecute people, what he said, there is no enough evidence. There were eight cabinet ministers who are to be prosecuted. You need to find out who are those ministers. All right? He said, no, there is no enough evidence. On one hand, when the evidence is being sought, the court tells Ringera and his team, don't proceed. On the other hand, Wako says, I don't have sufficient evidence. You, know, so, you really need to understand this issue and, 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 is and, and, a and, deeper... And, 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 I think... Listen, counsel. listen, no, no, no. This is, this, I'm talking about documents. Yeah. I'm not talking about anything else. Mm -hmm. All right? So when you are saying that the mutation in court, uh, Professor Yedu Muigai, was given a file. What you need to do is to look at the background. What was the activities were, that were taking place 
when Wako was the attorney general. Also, in totality. Yes. In totality, Kenyans are following and Kenyans are looking for clarity. Yes. Okay. Mm. And asking one simple question. Yes. These things do not happen in a vacuum. Yes. Okay. Yeah. This equipment of this telecommunication, nothing was delivered. Who says the one who delivered? In, in the end, this we're talking about the angleizing this particular contract. But the Kenya government never said they were not delivered. That is what is in the court. May I, I, please, I think may, this is may important. I, may I see what we are doing here? Mm -hmm. We are saying things, imagining them. The evidence that was presented by the Kenya government was the equipment were delivered, except there were allegations of corruption. One, two, there were allegations of pricing. Is that what I mean? Which we never proved. Okay, may, 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 I, may, I, may I agree with you? Yes. By adding further clarity, mm -hmm. please. This thing is not a joke. The, the knowledge I give today in this interview is not inborn. It's knowledge that I've acquired from perusing documents sure. pertaining to these particular contracts. Kenyans are asking, why pay a guarantor? And I want to agree with you that we are paying the guarantor because the Kenyan government, having refused to pay in 2004, the guarantor might, might have been forced to pay. Personal. If that is true, I also then want you to admit that that is a pointer to further corruption because that 1.4, only 980 million is causing, is going to first merchantile, the guarantor. The balance of 500 million is going to somebody else. So if first merchantile had cleared off and therefore he is now trying to get back what he paid those people. Who is getting this other money? Council, you are a child of this nation. Mm -hmm. You and I, we are privileged to have good education. Mm -hmm. We are privileged to have positions of influence in this country, and this is why we've come here. Let us be faithful to Kenyans, be faithful to Wanjiko, and force the president to act in accordance with the law, admit that he has violated the Constitution 135, force the president to respect the recommendations of the controller of budget. If we don't do that, this thing will now snowball into that which we can predict and that that we cannot predict. Let me tell you why. We are doing this because we are trying to sort out somebody who has a claim on the Kenyan government. Do you know that a company that did some work in Mombasa last week was in New York in court, and I think you know, and Gidu was forced to get the court to decide that let this matter be dealt with locally. The guy is now making a claim because he has seen people can make claims. So, so you are opening a floodgate. So there will be a floodgate, a floodgate of, of claims in. upon claims. And if but also are you not going to honor yes, when you if make Uru will be paying so. from the If Uru will be playing for paying from the uh -huh. taxpayers' money, he's going to fleece us. Alright, let's take a call. We have Gabriel who's been standing by for a while now. Gabriel, good morning and thank you for calling. Gabriel? Mzuri sana, Asante. Mimi na napenda vile mnaongea pale. Mhm. Na ile kitu mimi najaribu kuambia wale viongozi ambao kwa serikali za hii. Mhm. Sasa sasa wanaishi si vizuri kulipa watu binafsi kuweka kwa mfuko wao na kuwa na kula kwao. Serikali ilichukuliwa kutumikia wanaishi. Mm -hmm. Rais wetu tulimchakua atumikie wananchi wa Kenya. Mm -hmm. Sasa kama yeye atakuwa anafanya ujanja na watu wengine, wanalipwa pesa, huko anaenda kujifaidisha kwake. And then ana claim tunataka tumekuwa maingi ya kusaidia wananchi wa Kenya. Si atakuwa anadanganya sisi. Na pesa tumeenda kwa watu binafsi wameenda kukula kwao. Sisi tumeenda kusaidia wa Kenya wengine. Kama mtu anazalipwa milioni 900, milioni 900 anaenda kukula kwake. Sisi pia anakuja kusaidia wananchi wa Kenya. Hiyo kitu tunasema rais wetu anakosea. Right. Na na ile kitu tunauliza mheshimiwa Halwale. Kama yenyewe nyinyi mko kwa Senate tukula na tuko na bonga ile ipo imechukuliwa na wananchi. And then nyinyi mnajaribu kusaidia wananchi kwa mambo ambayo nasikia mnaongea pale. Na tuna wengine wanapinga yale ambao mnajaribu kuongea. Mm -hmm. Nyinyi mnajaribu kusaidia wananchi wa Kenya wengi 
kuliko wale wajacha wala wanataka kukula kipilafu sisi kama wanaiji ambao tuko hapa chini tunaungwa mkono wao haluala na wale wengine okay. simamengi mara serikali ya kizimame ispaitia wanaiji wa kenya alright asante kwa wanaiji pure asante sana wetu angalia sana anajaja kwa wanaiji ay asante sana gabriel kwa kupiga simu na kwa kutazama kipindi hichi hiki dennis <laughs> <laughs> Dennis is also calling us good morning Dennis. <laughs> Dennis. <laughs> Dennis. <laughs> Dennis. Hello? Good morning. <laughs> morning, morning, Katie. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much for calling. <laughs> is this Sophia? Yes, it is. Go ahead. You're live on Morning Express. Go ahead with your contribution. Now, I'm calling you from Mombasa. I greet you all, Mheshimiwa and Sophia. Thank, thank you. you. I want to contribute to the mo to the discussion that is going on mm -hmm. uh we are very actually we are unhappy with what the president is doing to the nation because payments are made without proper procedure that is supposed to be followed by the law mm -hmm. and we are very we, we as young generation we are we are not happy and we are telling the president these problems happened long time ago the stand that he had before he has now changed Whatever he is doing now is against what he had planned to do for the nation. And I support Mweshmiyo Halwale. We want him to mobilize other leaders so that they hold this, uh, this president to account of what he is doing to the nation. Because w the payments cannot just be made to people well known to them. They have not uh, 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 mentioned the names of the people who are being paid. They are hiding. It's like there is a fishy motive just to loot the money of the wanaichi. Okay, yeah. Dennis. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very, very much. much for your contribution as well. Um, the senator has talked about this could potentially open a floodgates in as far as, you know, this kind of scenario is playing out. Uh, but also as you touch on that, the contribution and the statement that came from the former prime minister in as far as this is concerned is that he did not necessarily bash this entire thing. He said, it's important to remember that some of those commitments were met some of those goods to be delivered were delivered or services were provided did that um, stand out for you i think uh, what i would like to request leadership because you see leadership has a very big responsibility we must always make a distinction between emotional outbursts and the reality of life for me why did we pass the new constitution we passed the new constitution to make sure that it has got right safeguards mm -hmm. to ensure that the past that we are talking about, we are talking about events that took place over 13, 14 years, about 14 years ago. And Mwashimua will agree with me here. Yes. All right? The new reason why we passed the new constitution is because we felt our leadership was not being held to account. They could do as they wish. But today, it's a new dawn. And the new dawn means we must also clean our past. We can't hide our head in the sand. Because even the new constitution says that we must honor our international obligations. Now when we enter into contracts, however you entered into them, all right? And you signed on them. When the chicken have come home to roost, you must bear the blunt. And Kenyans must realize that yes, we are dealing with the past poor governance of the country where anybody could enter into any kind of contract but the consequences they follow and i can tell you even if today the senator of kakamega was now the president of the republic of kenya i can assure you he won't behave anything different from what we do the same thing what Uhuru Kenyatta is let's, let's let, listen let, let, to let, a clip that he made some statements yes. <laughs> at a function where the president was we have that clip uh, um let's take a listen at to what uh, <laughs> senator halwale had to say okay. um and perhaps i don't know whether at that point because later the president didn't respond and say when your time comes <laughs> You shall be in government, perhaps, and do things your way, and said to allow him to do things his way. Now we have that clip um, ready. Let's take a listen. You said I had, and what I said, you know. <laughs> Since water to the summer, Kwamba, 
kulipa pesa ya anglo leasing ni kinyume ya sheria because you will be paying for projects that were never delivered on the ground you will be paying people who are non existent mheshimiwa rais wakati ukiwa chairman of public accounts ulitaja majina ya wahindi wawili unawajua ukataka majina ya wakenya wengine kutoka jamii moja Kenya hii wawili unawajua kwamba walisika na anglo leasing kama unataka kulipa anglo leasing tunataka tuone umeshika wale wawindi wawili na hawa wakenya wengine wawili weuzi uwashike mali yao tuuze irudi iwe yenye tatumika kulipa mambo ya anglo leasing badala ya kutumia public funds that is how you deal with it if you were president today <laughs> you still stand president by President Boni Haloli would huh? arrest this would arrest them, fellows. sell their stuff and you know Kenyan would, would be safe let, let me tell you in this world anything is possible mm -hmm. anything is possible the small things have a tendency of becoming big things that's why a fertilized ovum after nine months becomes a baby and after 18 years becomes an adult so anything is possible nobody should, should, should try to belittle us when we take positions on matters of accountability i tell you for some of us kabaki and i who had the privilege of enjoying free education free education mm -hmm. the university were paid a salary to learn books are bought for us food is free good food that i'd never eaten in my life i found it at the university we owe it to the public that we defend the public pass if we don't stop these Kenyans listen to me when I say you're opening floodgates already when President Kibaki was Minister for Finance in the 1970s a phantom project phantom like this one of Anglo list was there called Kenren fertilizer it was stopped and a claim had been made against the government again in European courts. Moi and give it to the old man for 24 years he refused to honor that uh, court declaration. And no single property of Kenya was auctioned. No funny bonds were, were sought and they were denied. Moi refused for 24 years to pay. Kibaki comes in, becomes the president, and what happens? Kenyans, he starts paying. Today, we are paying Kenren. So, to me, it looks like there is an elite group that enjoys protection protection an allied group that has got networks of corruption that enjoys protection from the state when the right president is in the office so just like we are paying kenren mm. now Uhuru is asking us to pay anglo leasing we must stop them and we have the tools the tools are the people sovereign power is in the hands of the people and this is why now we are going out to people in rallies to tell them that please refuse it is not futile okay. i've talked of impeachment but there is also a bigger court that we are we, we can approach and we might in thailand the prime minister mm. has been removed by the people enjoying the sovereignty of the people so even this government using legal means we can remove it using the sovereign power of the people Let's, so that we save our country. Let's, let's go back to the question of who dropped the ball in as far as the mess we are in now. Yes. And which takes us back to the state law council. We've heard of the morticians and the sergeants. So uh, Gido's argument is that by the time it got to him, things were a done deal. Uh, Wako says no. He had an opportunity to undo perhaps things that had not been done. He had the whole process to still right wrongs that perhaps yes. had been there. Yes. So who dropped the ball? Because now we are seeing a lot of ping pong, finger pointing, <laughs> you did this, you didn't do that, you know. So who dropped the ball for Kenya? Well, first of all, I think uh, we need to make sure we have the correct perspective of issues. Uh, uh, Thailand, the Prime Minister was not even moved by the people. It was the court. Mm -hmm. The judges sit down and had the petition and she was removed. So that's something that we need to be very clear. Now, as far as the Moishimu is concerned, let me tell you. The value of hard work is something that is very much imbued in me. And any money of the public that is lost corruptly or recklessly, it hurts me 
to the very core the same way it has my brother here. Thank you. <laughs> you get what I mean? I will be the last person who can support any corrupt means of using public resources mm -hmm. or any way, manner or shape of paying for things that are not being delivered. For me, all that we must really be very clear about here is this. And this is the information the Kenyans must have. So that when, you see, if you put garbage in, it's garbage out. Mm -hmm. If you don't give people the right information, they will make wrong conclusions. And when they make the wrong conclusions, they'll be like fools. We are making Kenyans to be like fools. When you go to these public rallies and you start making allegations that goods were not delivered, when the goods were delivered, right? Kenya government did not deny goods were delivered. To me, I think we are inciting and exciting very innocent public for reasons which we must not do, in my opinion. So, secondly, I also want to say this. Who drops the ball, sir? The point of the matter is this. You see, I am not different from much more here. Because we are talking about defense of public assets and public resources. But let us not in that process confuse the issues mm. all right with other reasons for instance when you look at the facts of angrodism we are only talking about here two contracts only which may have said there were 18 contracts and some of them were supposed to be negotiated even when Moshmo Uhuru was a, 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 a chairman of the Public Accounts Committee, all right, it was, he was looking at what are the issues? What are the issues? What I can say for me from a research point of view, and I want to make it very clear from a research point of view, we need somebody in this country to sit down and write very systematically about Golden Bath, about Anglo Risi, the actors, the architects, so that Kenyans are very, very clear. Mm -hmm. Because what we don't do in this country is that we are not very evidence minded people. We're very emotional. Very, very emotional. And I can tell you with all due respect, I watched my, br my brother here, whom I have all respect for him, at Kibera. Mweshimua, uh, James Orengo, a very senior lawyer, senior to me even, and other people, okay. make statement, which when you listen to them, All right. you start wondering, mm -hmm. what are these people giving to the Monanchi? Before, before you lose track to, of, of the whole story and the whole scenario, I have a straight question for you, Yes. Uh, Kabage. Yes. The way you look at it from there, you see it. Yes. Anglo-leasing was a clean deal. Is that what you're saying to Kenyans? No, 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 no. Oh, please. <laughs> no, no, it, it's, it's a straight question. <laughs> no, no, it wasn't. Uh, I didn't say it was a clean deal. It, uh, uh, deal. Was, it was not what a clean deal. What I said is this. The evidence that was presented by the Kenya government in defense of lawsuits in both Geneva and London did not rise to the threshold that would have allowed the justice in those courts to rule in our favor remember that the only thing that i can say for sure the kenya government did not say there were no goods in way of wizard equipment communication or in the way of broad, uh, broadband uh, that were delivered what the kenya government said using the price water house coopers is there are allegations of corruption Two, there was overpricing of equipment. They never said the equipment were not delivered. They never said that they were the equipment that were delivered are not functioning. So the Kenyans must know that. So I, I, I have to come back to that question because mm. in totality, after yes. we are done with this conversation and Kenyans would be saying, so what is it? Was it a clean deal? Because that is the question. We have to answer that question. If we are not able to answer it, then we are back to square one. You see, the thing uh, is, before this deal, say, this deal, this, okay. just a minute. Cancel. Before you can even say it was a clean deal, you look at the facts. All right? For me, all So for the facts that are that there. It was a dirty deal, the, the, but the, the, we were the, not the, able to the present Kenyan the same in court. Is that what you're saying? The government made an allegation of two issues, please. One, 
it was a corrupt deal two it was overpriced oh they were told oh give us proof there was no proof senator uh, i i actually don't so know I don't what know about i don't know what my senior brother here is defending i'm not defending anything the point is this where you are now yes. on this chair yes eight years ago senior people in government were there they were saying if it was a bad deal where is the proof so what did we do we then asked using public funds again asked price water house to investigate yes they did mm -hmm. a serious forensic audit yes and they said this was driven by corrupt deals so they certified that this was corruption mm -hmm. having been so satisfied mm -hmm. then the government needs forever to act in accordance with that recommendation that even if you pay even if you attempt to pay you are paying a bad deal and because kenyans can get confused about the digital in a support visual what is this thing we are talking about it was supposed to interconnect all the 980 post offices in the country in the country okay I want you to tell me. <laughs> I don't know what your village is. <laughs> my, my nearest post office in, in Kakamega is called Kaega. <laughs> I know that Kaega post office is one of those 980. There is, no there is no such a connection. You go to Masalava, there is no such a connection. You go to Manyuria, there is no such a connection. You go in Lugari, in Likuyani, everywhere. Are you saying it is only there in Central Province? And oh, if it is only in Central I, Province, is it there in all of Kenya? You are wrong. Can okay. you listen to me? This is important. <laughs> Kenyans want to see. So when people who are listening go to their stadium, in a, I mean their post office in Yala, and they don't see this interconnection and you're saying it was delivered you are defending something which is not defensible let's just say it was wrong and the way to go forward is this way the way to go forward is and i'm asking president Uru again and again to swallow his pride and realize that he is not ruling kenya the way he keeps on saying he's the chief executive officer who is supposed to make decisions in accordance with the constitution wonderful. it's only in a monarchy yes. where the king decre decrees okay, okay. Well, let, let me let me just first of all i want to tell mwashmiwa here he no he must not profile me as having come from central kenya in fact i, I see the village i don't no, know no, your no. village no, 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 no. first <laughs> of all i don't even come from central he kenya comes from Molo, i think i was born this thing for the sake of record yes i was born in El Bagon. Yes. I was brought up in Molo. Ah. I visit Central Kenya like he does. He probably has been more to Central Kenya than myself. So <laughs> we must avoid because this is a post office. El Bagon post office. Listen, El listen, listen, listen. No, no, is listen, it connected? No, no, Mr. No, Mr. No, no, I have not audited myself. Uh, <laughs> you, you are a chairman of the public account committee. But I want to discount, and this is very, very important. I want to discount the political class mentality. Of profiling Kenyans. Mm -hmm. I am not talking about something else. I'm only saying what was presented in court. I am not saying that the deal was bad or good. All I have said is this what argument we put forward in court, unless we don't believe in the rule of law. And I can also remind my good friend here. If you go to the preamble of our constitution, one of the preambles of the constitution says the following. We recognize the, uh, we recognize the aspirations of the people of Kenya for essential values of human rights, democracy, equality, freedom, justice, and the rule of law. Mm. Just a minute. Because if you do not believe in the rule of law, all right? Mm. And the rule of law does not mean whenever you go to court you must win it means that you have an opportunity to present your case to an impartial tribunal yes they listen to the facts once they listen to the facts they make a judgment okay uh, and one person in that process will lose we happen to have been the victim but knowing what you know about this whole process and yes. you did not answer my question about yes. who dropped the ball mm. you know about the appeal and everything that happened because yes. kenyans have been treated to theatrics of it's you it's who yes. who 
failed who did okay. the guy have okay. a chance to reverse excellent some very of what perhaps was not put in place put by Amos Wako let me put again i can only go to the history of the matter the issue which is really very painful here to me personally and to all Kenyans is this when the deals were being made they were being made in the form of contract legal contract mm -hmm. and when they were being made they went to a ministry you get what i mean right for a corporation that had a board of governors called public uh, postal corporation of kenya all right that board for your information did not even know that that deal was going on it was approved by the ministry of transport and communication that's what happened just okay. a minute okay when it was it happened the attorney general of the republic of kenya then wako wako said the deal is good the deal is what the deal is good mm -hmm. when the chicken have come home to roost he is running away he said no i left the you with a job but you left me with a job that was already <laughs> impossible to deal with you can i'm not defending you either, but so I'm it was, it you dropped at workers the, the worker worker today should tell the kenyans why all those angry racing deals were passing through his desk and he was sanctioning them let him answer that question and also your yes. party leader is implicated and i want you to answer that for yes, us when yes. we return from the this issue short break. of who dropped the ball yes is critical okay in my view everybody has faithfully held on this board my understanding is that when musalim davidi was the minister in charge of telecommunication mm. and he saw the opportunity connecting our post offices was going to improve the security of this nation he held on the board he approached treasury uh, chris obure held on the board wako held on the board because the deal had to go on however when had to go on but had, he's the person to advise in I'm, terms I'm, of I'm, legality yes. of this ball was yes. it a legal ball or do we yes. throw it away uh, now let me go further okay. and now when it started becoming apparent that these balls these guys were holding on was going to be pricked by corruption corruption deals president kibaki and the president kibaki of kibaki one was a wonderful president he then stopped his government stopped those contracts in 2004 and we were very happy and he did it in a very dramatic manner murungaru went miraria went and saitoti went you will remember all these things mm -hmm. somebody was acting pro proactively was leading this nation now, as the ball kept on being held, <laughs> Wako held the ball further and went and entered a defense in Europe so that this ball could not fall. He entered a defense, but unfortunately his tenure came to the end. He gave the ball to Kidu. Kidu drops the ball by failing to enter a credible, vigorous defense for the Republic of Kenya. He dropped the ball. Now, the ball then bounced back. Oof. And who holds it? <laughs> who holds the ball again faithfully? Yeah, it is the controller of budget. Holding the ball like this, she says, no, we can't pay. We can only pay if we go get approval from parliament. So she passed over the ball faithfully to parliament, uh, to the committee of parliament called budget committee. Whatever we see me held the ball and said, I can do nothing. Let me pass this ball to parliament so that parliament can make a decision parliament held the ball and said you cannot pay and then what happens the president drops the ball he then says pay no, no. so two people have dropped the ball <laughs> professor gitu mugai uh, and president mugai <laughs>